Hello, and welcome back to another episode of the Strong Collectors Podcast. Today, we are talking to Daryl Young. Now, if you've been listening to any of our podcasts for the last several weeks, you probably have an idea of Daryl Young's work. We've been talking about our giveaway that we're doing here on the channel. Um, if you're subscribed on YouTube, once we hit 200 subscribers, we're going to be giving away one of Daryl Young's posters. Um, the links for his art are going to be down in the description, so you can go and check those out. Um, leave a comment on which one you would choose if you end up being that winner. Um, so like I said, all you have to do for that is subscribe on YouTube. So if you're listening on the audio platforms, head over to YouTube, just search Strong Collectors, and you'll find us there. Um, but we found Daryl at some of our local comic cons. He was selling his posters, buttons, um, things like that. And Jordan and I ended up picking up some of his artwork. If you're watching on YouTube, you can see that hanging up behind us. I've got my Galactus, Terax, and Silver Surfer. Jordan has his Cthulhu and his um, Doctor Strange. He's got a uh, Silver Surfer hiding, but we figured you, you don't need to double up on it. I got my Silver Surfer right. up. Jordan doesn't <laughs> want to be a copycat, even though he got his first. Um, That's true. That's true. I was first. But Daryl also has done some animation um, and toy design. So we're definitely going to be getting into some of that later. Um, but first off, um, Daryl, we kind of wanted to jump right in with some of the art that we know you from, and that's kind of the retro kind of Jack Kirby style posters that you do. And we were curious how you landed on that art style. Is that just, you did some art and that's what you found when you were best at. That's what you have the most fun with. Why do you choose that style? Well, yes to all the above. Um, <laughs> I uh, I grew up uh, in the 70s, in the 80s, uh, so I was born in 1969, and um, that's the stuff that I loved, you know, growing up in that era, and I, um, as a kid, you know, our options for entertainment were very limited, um, you know, we had cartoons, toys, comics, um, you know, stuff like that, maybe going to the movies, um, so I just fell in love with, with comic books, uh, just at a really early age. I mean, I'm talking like um, some of my earliest memories, like maybe four years old, five years old, three years old, were comic books, um, hand-me-downs from uh, like aunts and uncles, um, mm -hmm. you know, because comics were disposable, you know, nobody bought them to save them or, or keep them, most people. They read them, so I, I might, I, you know, I had a bunch with no covers on it. It was just treated like a newspaper, really. And, um, but I fell in love with all time periods of comics. Um, so, um, you know, when you're a kid growing up in that era, um, there was not much to do. So I was at the library a lot, you know, because the library was, you know, the only place where you could find, um, you know, origins of Marvel comics, son of origin of Marvel comics, you know, those early trade paperbacks. And then I discovered, uh, you know, reprints of Golden Age comics, you know, um, and then the Kirby comics from the 60s. Um, so, you know, anything that was comic book related, I just fell in love with the whole history of it. So as an adult, um, I, you know, you, you read about um, pleasing art directors. You know, I've been an artist for many years and that's, that's, that's the case, you know, if you want to get work, you know, certain art directors, um, they're looking for a certain look, a certain style, and you would, I would read or hear about, oh, you know, that, you know, Jack Kirby style doesn't sell, or that 80s style doesn't sell, and having been an artist for, you know, over, probably over 20 years, and, you know, kind of being, I don't know if I would say the word frustrated, but I need another outlet, you know, I need to do something that I really enjoyed, and, uh, I did animation for quite some time uh, doing uh, serial, uh, serial commercials mostly. I did a, I worked for a studio in Chicago called Calabash Animation. Did that for about nine years. And then I was a toy designer for quite some time, 12, 13 years, something like that. Uh -huh. um, doing stuff for like, I started out doing toys for Happy Meals for McDonald's. Mm -hmm. And then um, I moved over to another place. Uh, and they did toys for like Burger King and 
um, MetLife plush Snoopies and, you know, all those like freebie kind of toys. They call them premiums. Mm-hmm. And um, a couple of friends of mine um, were starting to do conventions as, um, as a creative outlet. And um, they were trying to get me in. So I really have to, you know, give a shout out to um, uh, my, my best friend when I'd grown up. His name's Kevin Barber. And uh, we grew up uh, in junior high. We met each other in junior high, and he was the only kid that I knew who read comic books. Uh, <laughs> That's how Jordan and I met. That, that, that was, was kind of Dakota. We were playing at recess, and he was the only person that knew anything about superheroes, so we that, became friends. That, that was the bonding. That's all it took. I mean, there was just this kinship, right? You, um, Everybody else was, you know, uh, doing sports or video games or whatever, and I was doing sports too, but um, there's just something about comic book people. We get each other, right? Mm-hmm. Um, exactly. So, uh, so as an adult, um, Kevin also pursued a, a life as an artist. He wound up being a Disney animator for many years, wow. and we re, we re, we reconnected. Kind of, he was working in Florida. He came back to Chicago, and uh, we reconnected after many years. And he encouraged me. You know, he knew what I liked to do. And then I, I had a couple friends. Their name is uh, Sarah and Catherine Saturn, the Saturn twins. If you look up the Saturn twins, uh, they got a great, really fun um, style. And um, they were trying to get me to do these shows. And, you know, um, as most people, we're kind of afraid to go out of our safety zone. And even though we may not be happy with what we're doing, um, it's something that we know, right? We're, we're yeah. we don't want to try new things we're kind of safe in our i don't want to use the word misery but do you understand what i'm saying (laughs) oh yeah for sure (laughs) um so they encouraged me uh and i started doing shows um uh maybe seven years ago i think it was about six or seven years ago um i did um i can't remember what my first show was it was either c2e2 in chicago Mm-hmm. Or there's another show called Northwest Indiana Comic Con in, okay. in, uh, in Indiana. And um, I didn't know what to bring because as an artist, <laughs> you're thinking, what can I sell? Mm-hmm. Right. You know, what what do people want? You know, how do I make money off this? Um, so it was kind of a shotgun approach. I had, I, you know, as a commercial artist, I could work in several different styles, you know, that people would say, oh, you know, they're not going to recognize it because you're working. It's like a language, right? Like you speak Spanish or French or English. It's just another way of, of looking at things and of doing things. So I, I had a real shotgun approach. I had all the stuff that I brought with me. And um, some of it was um, superhero artwork, which I loved, but there was part of me that I'm like, oh, this isn't going to sell. You know, I was just negative about it. You know, all oh, this isn't going to sell. And lo and behold, it got the best feedback. And nice. I started out with a couple black and white drawings. And then the next year I came back and I colored some of those. And I started out like with two or three little, I do like these little election buttons. Mm-hmm. And it'll be like, um, you know, it'll say, it'll be a character, um, you know, like, yeah, they've Superman. got those slogans on them. Yeah. That's it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. It's like a funny little slogan. And that's like from growing up in the 70s and 80s, like Mad Magazine or Wacky Packages, you know, just a little, little silly slogan that goes with the character. And um, so I started out with those and I noticed that those were getting a reaction and I just kept, I kept doing them. And um, so the, the, the pins, the buttons, um, do well with all ages you know it kind of goes across the board older people younger people um but then the the posters the prints that you have in the background there Mm -hmm. um i was just really getting a good reaction from people and um i like yourself i think you even told me you know it shows that you like what you're doing Mm -hmm. you know when you see the artwork it, it shows and it and that's that's what brought me happiness um so that's what I've been going with and, and not really caring about, oh, you know, I got to impress this art director or what's this hot style? Who's the latest hard artist? Sure. I don't even know who any of his artists are from 10 <laughs> years. <laughs> you know? I really don't either. 
I mean, I might know some, and there's, there's, you know, hundreds of amazing, talented artists out there. I'm mm -hmm. not putting anybody down there, you know, especially in today's technology and um, age where you could watch YouTube videos and you could find out how to draw anything you want imaginable, mm -hmm. as opposed to growing up years ago where we had to buy an art book or a magazine mm -hmm. or, or something like that. It was much more difficult. But um, so I just went with what I liked and um, that's what I'm sticking with. Um, and it's really, it's really rewarding when um, my uh, target audience is, you know, God, that's such like a marketing uh, slogan, but the people <laughs> who buy my, I'm sorry, I, you know, like uh, doing, uh, especially doing the, the, the toys uh, for many years, you work with marketing people and salespeople and, um, it's just a, you know, it's just a property to them. And, mm -hmm. um, but it was nice to see that I get a lot of guys my age, like in their late forties, early sixties, but I was starting to get what I would say younger people like yourself, like you guys, mm -hmm. um, you know, maybe like high school students, twenties, early thirties. Um, but how old are you guys? We're both like 26, 26. 27. Am I oh 27? yeah. Okay. So uh, yeah, I know you don't really know, you know, when somebody asks you, like somebody asked me how and I had to, I had to do the math in my head because I don't, I don't really care. But, um, so that was, I was, um, I was hitting some people like, uh, your ages and that really, that meant a lot to me because people say, Hey, it doesn't matter, um, who it looks like. We just like it. Right. You know, we just like it for what it is. We think it's cool. Um, and so that's, that's why I went with it. That's, that's what I enjoy doing. That's my, yeah my passion right there for sure i mean that's kind of i mean jordan has heard me say it several times on the podcast i i mean we mainly do action figures and there's tons of action figures that i have in my collection that i have no idea who the character is i just think they look cool and yep. <laughs> that's all it takes i just want i want a cool collection whether i know who it is or not and then yep. i'll learn more about the characters too so um, yeah you got it you got it yeah do you I mean, do a... any collecting daryl oh my god uh <laughs> <laughs> or what do you collect? I guess. What, what, or what, what do you don't like? I collect? Um, okay. <laughs> well, I, you know that's funny because um, as you get older, things you know things change yet they stay the same, right? So, mm -hmm. you know, I have kids now, um, so my life has changed in some ways. But uh, I, I, I used to collect comic books, toys like you guys, you know, <laughs> action mm -hmm. figures. You know, so when I look at what you got set up in the background there, I'm like, oh, mm -hmm. that's cool. I mean, <laughs> I don't, I don't buy it anymore. So as I got, you know, as I got older, um, you know, I, I describe it this way, um, and I don't mean this as an insult. This is just part of our personalities as collectors. When I talk to people, I say, you know, we kind of have like that uh, obsessive compulsive disorder where you, you know, you have to have everything, right? Mm -hmm. I think that's just kind of who a lot of collectors are that's just who we are right we we love something we have to have all of it and i was i was like that you know um you know if i saw a comic i liked i have to have every issue if i saw an artist i liked i have to have every issue if i saw a toy series like i um i remember when um the mcfarland toys first came out um mm -hmm. the spawn toys and i was like oh my god <laughs> like everybody else at that time we're like these are freaking awesome you know so yeah i didn't really know much about the characters but who cared you know these were awesome figures you know that's they were how i the first... i think both jordan and i got into spawn because we saw the action figures and i really thought they were super cool so like i said i don't need to know the characters i started getting spawn figures and i was like i should actually know something about these characters and then i started <laughs> getting the comics and now we both read spawn books and have spawn action figures in our collection Mm -hmm. Yeah, it kind of worked in reverse. You know, you, right. you went from the, the figure to the comic instead of the comic to the figure. Right. And um, so I was, I was of that mentality. I was that person who, you know, had to have everything. When I, you know, every Spawn figure, every, you know, if there was a Happy Meal toy, you know, when um, Batman Animated first came out, that was another mm -hmm. huge um, influence on a lot of people. You know, uh, Bruce Tim and his whole team. It was like, oh my God, someone gets these characters. These aren't being these guys are not a bunch of studio execs who know nothing about Batman or just thinking, you know, what toys can we sell to some demographic? These guys mm -hmm. loved what they did. 
you know, mm-hmm. they, it blew my mind away, you know, and then they went on to do Superman and uh, Justice League and Justice League Unlimited and uh, Teen Titans and oh my God, you know, yeah. so I was, yeah, I'd have to get all that. And uh, <laughs> as I got older, um, you know, I had, I had boxes and boxes of stuff in my, you know, sitting in my basement mm-hmm. and I'm like, okay, you know, your, your priorities change. Right. Your, right. your priorities change. And, uh, you know, being a father with, with kids, um, you just shift, you know, but you, so what I did is I went through, and I don't know if you guys have been through this yet. You may go, or you may go through it, uh, what I call a purge, <laughs> you know, like you, you know what that means? Like you accumulate mm-hmm. so much, you have so much and you're like, Oh my God, this is madness. And then you get rid of it. Right. Mm-hmm. But lo and behold, mm-hmm. three years later, you've got the same amount of stuff again, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, so that's, we're in, that's yeah. in our nature, right? Mm-hmm. You know, that's just yeah. in our nature. So, you know, it's who we are. Yeah, what we're involved think? in some different Facebook groups and stuff that kind of buy and sell and trade um, just different figures. So we'll, we'll go through that too, where it's like, hey, I haven't really looked at this one for six months, but I like it. <laughs> but <laughs> do I still need yeah. it? Probably not. Yeah. So, and you, you yeah. let it go and you, you buy something else, right? Mm-hmm. There you go. It's that attraction to it. So I, I found through time um, as I got older that uh, I could enjoy things and not have to have them anymore. Um, so I, I did, you know, I did a purge of com. I, I'm God, I don't know. I probably had 10,000 comics at some point and I just, I, I will little down. I just, I have a few boxes. Mm-hmm. I have a huge graphic novel um, collection though because all the mm-hmm. reprints right you got the marvel masterworks right. and the omnibuses and stuff and mm-hmm. uh, the paper quality is, is beautiful mm-hmm. so i i got to you know i have to i didn't i did a purge of that but it always the stuff just always accumulates so um <laughs> but as i got older i just realized you know you don't have to have everything you can have the memory right mm-hmm. the memory of the thing you know so um i don't really collect toys anymore um i still have a a habit with buying books though that's something that hasn't gone away but i still love the toys i still like to see what's out there um i still appreciate the just the immensity of characters you know mm-hmm. like um you know 30 you know like when i was 10 years old buying a machine man in a quarter box never in my wildest dreams would i think there's going to be a machine man action figure at some yeah. point or, or a jack of hearts or you know, Frogman or any obscure character, <laughs> right. you know what I mean, that's out there. You know, like even She-Hulk at the time was an obscure character, right? And now she's yeah. got her own TV series and stuff like that. So um, so I guess I know I, I like to babble. So long story short is I don't really collect anything. Um, I hate saying I collect things, uh, but I, yeah. I have a huge graphic novel collection and I do have toys sprinkled throughout. Because I, I just like you guys, I just love it. You know, mm-hmm. I just, I love it. But I but you know what I did actually, if you, if you want me to tell the story, is um, what happened with my artwork is, um, you know, when you buy something, you guys tell me this, like, don't you guys kind of get that, like that rush when mm-hmm. you find something that you like? It's like a certain oh, yeah. feeling, right? Mm-hmm. Like, oh, I've been looking for this one. Or, oh, I've been, oh, wow, you know, I found it. And I never, you know, it's sort of like this, aha, like you found a treasure, right? It's like yeah. this, mm-hmm. the happy feeling, right? So, right. What I found through, and it was just by accident, through experimentation was I did that with my artwork. So mm-hmm. as I started doing the conventions and found that, you know, the, the buttons are doing well and people are, 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 start, you know, are liking the superhero prints, is I got that rush out of creating more artwork. Mm-hmm. So instead of buying like, um, you know, oh, like, a devil dinosaur statue okay mm-hmm. which would have been like two or three hundred dollars um what i did was i'm gonna do a devil dinosaur print so what that made me do is get a bunch of uh of reference you know look through simple comic books find mm-hmm. some images on the internet and you kind of get that rush again because mm-hmm. it's bringing you back to that happy place you know yeah. like what and you're, you're rediscovering it you're finding out why you like it in the first place and then what i'll do is i'll, I'll create a piece of artwork and it gives me that same feeling Mm-hmm. But in reverse, instead of spending money, I'm trying to make money. Yeah. <laughs> if that makes any sense. If that, that makes, makes any sense. sense. It's yeah. probably a smarter way to do it. Dakota and I are going to start drawing now. Yeah. Some money. 
Well, that was going to oh, be another one of my questions too, is like, how yeah. do you decide which characters to do? Because I mean, you have some of those obscure characters, like Jordan's got Cthulhu in the background, you've got a wolf man. Um, and I guess, how do you, I guess two-parter, how do you decide on those characters? And I've always been curious about like, why does Marvel and DC not come and sue you for drawing their characters? Is that like, I don't know. Riddle, riddle me that i'm just curious <laughs> okay, okay, sure sure well the the the, the first part of it um mm -hmm. is um when i first started doing it i was just basically doing characters that i liked mm -hmm. and that meant something to me and i kind of got that um that aha feeling right mm -hmm. you know and since i was going down the road of not caring really um what the larger masses thought of it um i i got that great feeling you know like i might let's say i'm at a convention i sell one modoc print right? right but i had this great bonding period with this person mm -hmm. and modoc especially it's like he, you either love him or you completely hate the character <laughs> yeah. and it's like i go you know like and i i, I joke around i'm like i should have made like a little modoc like underground pin for people who are in the club but yeah. you know it's just this nice like like rom for example or um micronauts or something like that um it's not just a piece of artwork but it's a memory for somebody mm -hmm. so i found by drawing things that i really enjoyed or have a good memory for me i was able to share that experience with somebody else who would and i was who actually thanked me for having what i had because something mm -hmm. i hear a lot is you're the only guy who draws this way you're the only guy whose art I've seen like this. I'm not. I'm not the only guy who draws like this because I'm. I'm taking it from sources that are out there. But if most people who go to comic conventions, um, there's very few people who are. Hey man, I'm into the '80s artwork. Or hey man, I want to draw like a 1970s artist. You know. So it's it's changing. You know. Mm -hmm. But I'm I'm staying in my happy zone. I'm staying where <laughs> where I where I want. And I always listen to people, like requests from people. Mm -hmm. um, if I hear it enough, I mean, of course, I, I do have to make money, you know, right. on it in order to, to, to continue to do this. So if I hear something, um, and I'll give you a sample, like a man thing. Mm -hmm. um, I drew man thing because that was um, a request from somebody who said his 10 year old son, his favorite character was man thing. And I'm like, what? You know, <laughs> I'm, like, I'm like, all right, I'm going to draw man thing, you know, just because I, I had to do that. Yeah. for his son and um so i i um i kind of have like an arrangement with some people where um i'll draw the characters i like to draw um and then people ask me hey do you do commissions and i said yeah i, I go i have two price structures for commissions i go if it's a commission that's like something personal or something that does not fit within my universe of mm -hmm. things that i would sell then there's a certain price, right? But I also have the thing with people, I say, you know what, if it's something that I would draw anyway that fits within the universe of my quote unquote look, then I, I give them a lower price. Mm -hmm. So like I did Gambit because of that. I did Rogue because of that. Um, I recently did a Shadow because mm -hmm. of that. So yep. um, uh, Azrael, right? Batman mm -hmm. Azrael, yep. um, I did that. So um it, I'm doing characters, um, I'm kind of going outside my um, comfort zone and doing characters that I might not normally do, but um, it's a challenge, you know, it's, it's in, in a positive way. It's a positive challenge. So, so that was, did I answer that one? Uh, yes. And then the second part, well, okay, I'm going to ask the <laughs> second part to that first part and then we'll get back sure, to the second go ahead. part. Yeah, um, so for our listeners that are out there like, wow, I love this artwork. I want to commission something what are those two price structures for folks that want sure, to commission? Sure. Yeah. So um, for a character like you got, like you guys have hanging in the background, mm -hmm. um, it's a uh, $225, $225 for a character that includes since I, Oh, by the way, I work hundred percent digitally. Okay? okay. So I, when I was an, an, an animator, I was animated for about nine years. Everything was, pencil and paper this was before digital animation came in so i i'm trained in traditional drawing i love traditional drawing but when i switched over to doing toy design 
um, that's when I started learning Photoshop because those guys have to crank out a huge amount of work <laughs> and there's always changes, you know, mm. like, uh, we don't want his boots blue. We want them red, or, you know, or, you know, you, you know, we don't want that. Mm -hmm. We don't want, you know, make the hair shorter. I mean, just insane. Just people who huh. don't know anything about the property, you're always calling the shots. Yeah. And um, <laughs> so um, I learned Photoshop from some really good guys who, who kind of took me under their wing. And then I kind of uh, didn't stop drawing, you know, traditionally um, to, you know, 99% of my work is done digitally. So the price structure is 225 for a character, but I tell people right off the bat, I go, it's digital. So what I'll do is I will send you a high res file. I will show you the steps along the way. So I will show you the sketch. I will show you the black and white and I will show you the color. And I'd be happy to send files of all that artwork. So you're getting files of all cool. the stages. And then I will send, I have a really nice printer at home. So I'll send you a signed copy of it. And there's that now, like, for example, like the Azrael and the shadow that I did, mm -hmm. um, I do those at 125. Okay. But mm -hmm. I, I always ask permission. So what I do is, um, for example, like the Azrael, um, a young man asked me at the latest uh, C2E2 convention. He had bought some of my work on Etsy, and we got mm -hmm. to talking. And he asked me, you know, the price, and I told him. And and he's like, Yeah, man, I just I want to do one. I want to do I want you to do the Azrael. I said, I told him the price structure and I said, it's 225 if you solely want this for yourself. If you're okay with me taking it and selling it, then it's going to be the slower price. Mm -hmm. And 90% of the time, people are okay with that. And I always respect what people, I always respect their wishes, but I just, mm -hmm. I try to give people a break on the price. If, and most people just say, oh man, I'd be happy for you to share mm -hmm. what you're doing with me uh, for, or for me. So, um, does that answer that one? Yeah. I go off on definitely. a tangent sometime. I can't remember the <laughs> no, question. that's fine. Um, and then how We're are you? We're just thinking of suggestions now. Yeah. Yeah, I mean... <laughs> yeah you're right. Yeah, you're right. Down in your notebook. <laughs> yeah. I mean, we've talked about Spawn. I would love to get a Spawn. Oh, uh, Spawn. My wife would love um, us. Yeah. Um, I, uh, yeah, Spawn's on the... I always say to people, it's the to-do list. Um, yeah. I hear Spawn a lot. And I love Eric Larson. Um, Savage Dragon. Mm -hmm. I was a... Yeah. I was a fan of Eric's when he was doing Doom Patrol at DC mm -hmm. Comics. Actually, I was a fan of Eric's. He was doing Megaton. It was some mm. really small black and white uh, comic. I think the publisher was here in Chicago. I think that's how I got my hands cool. on it. I think the comic was called Megaton. And I was a young kid when I saw that. I'm like, wow, this guy really knows how to do superheroes. And then he did Doom Patrol. Uh, then he went over to Marvel and he did... Um, amazing spider-man and the rest is history you know then so i love to do a savage dragon that's a good deal so savage dragon and, and spawn I, I love both of those and i got a lot of respect for todd mcfarlane and everything that he's accomplished yeah i mean you can't you can't not respect the guy so what else is on your to-do list just i mean <laughs> um, not, maybe not the whole list but you know just kind of at the, <laughs> at the top of your brain um hold on i'm gonna i'm gonna pull it up Okay. We're talking. I'm, I'm sitting for my computer. Very cool. Okay. All right. So I got a lot of requests for Harley Quinn, mm, Poison Ivy. Yeah. Um, a lot of girls, a lot of females asked for Harley Quinn and Poison Ivy. I did a Joker, so I need to do those two. Um, let's see. Uh, Cyclops from the X Men. Oh, okay. Yeah. Um, I would love to do a, a Sinister Sinister Six. Oh, uh, but, that'd be cool. But individual characters, so yeah. not a group shot, but like Electro, Green Goblin, Doc Ock, mm -hmm. all kind of solo. So you could, a person could create their own Sinister Six from that. Make a collection um, out of the posters. There you go. Exactly, exactly, <laughs> exactly. So you make a collection, and if I did like seven or eight, because that was always like a revolving um, group, yeah. you could pick yeah. your favorites out of there. So so that's that's a couple. Um, cool. so you said you've done the Shadow. Um, mm hmm have you ever thought of or considered doing the Phantom? Oh yeah, he yes, yeah, he's right up there. Yeah, yeah, I, I love the Phantom. I love the Phantom. I, yeah. I love like Phantom, Flash Gordon, Conan the Barbarian. Those like you know, kind of pulpy heroes are are some of my favorites. But uh, yeah, uh, Phantom, Conan, and Red Sonia. Oh yeah, 
yeah, those are there's uh, and the list the list never ends. That's that's the right. thing. You know, it's, it becomes an obsession. Like instead of collecting toys, you know, it's you know what character am I going to do next? Um, so um, yeah, and endless array there. Oh, now you had another you had another question that was really good that I don't really have an answer for, but I'll just give you my thoughts on it. So you said, okay. well, why doesn't Marvel or DC you know, go after you, shoot you. Well, first of all, I just, you know, I'm just some dude out of my basement, right? Sure. I'm not, um, I, um, I'm not making a lot of money on it. Um, I'm doing it because I enjoy it. Um, but if you go, anybody who's ever been to a comic show or a comic convention, and you guys correct me if I'm wrong, because you go, you guys go to them all the time. Ninety percent of the art that is there are interpretations of existing characters mm -hmm. yeah. right so mm -hmm. everybody is doing it and um there's almost like this unwritten rule like it's okay you know it's okay it's probably, mm -hmm. i i don't know i don't know the legal aspect of it i've, I've had mm -hmm. people warn me oh you better watch out then i'm like you know what if if all their rules apply to everybody yeah and if it's fair <laughs> then that's fine then shut sure. down 90 percent of artists alley Mm -hmm. you know um then that's fine you know so um i have you know heard of some people who've gotten like cease and desist notices mm -hmm. uh from companies before but i really don't know how they i really don't know how they pick and choose those people i don't know right. um it's all you know sort of like you keep doing it until you can't do it anymore you know what i mean <laughs> yeah. um and i you know i just i really enjoy it um and i'm not I'm not selling, you know, books. I'm not selling T-shirts. Um, it's really small, you know. It's just mm -hmm. I sell prints um, on my Etsy shop and at shows, and I sell buttons. Mm -hmm. I have had several um, during COVID. Um, I have I had several um, like takedowns of the buttons that I had mm -hmm. um, because I think a lot of, of these uh, licensing people had nothing to do. <laughs> um during covid so um i just uh, it was funny because like things that i had up there for five six seven years and nobody said anything about suddenly um oh he, you know cease and desist on this character cease and desist on this character and it really came close where i almost lost my shop and wow. um, that is part of my income mm -hmm. so i i looked at what was being what people were going after and i took all of that down so I wouldn't. What were they going shop. after? Um, it was. Um, I'll, I'll take. Well, I'll, yeah, I'll, I'll give you specifics. So, Hello Kitty. I had a Hello Kitty button. Um, interesting. And which is interesting <laughs> because if you type in Hello Kitty on Etsy, you get ten thousand bootleg right. pieces of artwork. Um, mm -hmm. Hello Kitty. Um, Bob Ross. I had a Bob Ross button, <laughs> and that lasted maybe like two or three days, and wow. they went after me. Um, what I do is after, when somebody comes after me, um, that's fine. You know, it's like, those are the rules of the game, mm -hmm. right? Like it's not, I don't, I don't own that. I just um, enjoy, you know, I'm trying to spread my interpretation of that. Sure. Like when I, like Bob Ross, everybody who had Bob Ross was being, was being taken down. So they were consistent. <laughs> Hello Kitty was not consistent. Um, <laughs> what's another weird one? Uh, uh, Totoro, you guys know? Yeah. Uh, Studio Ghibli, Totoro, mm -hmm. and one of the other characters. So I learned don't do any Studio Ghibli stuff. Huh. Um, and I've had friends that and we have talked, and they have said don't do anime, don't do Studio Ghibli. But then when you type it up there, there's a thousand of those. It right. doesn't. Mm -hmm. There's you know there's like there's no rules really. It's <laughs> it's very odd. It's very strange. Interesting. How yeah. like uh, a friend of mine, um, his brother um, had an Etsy shop. An amazing artist. He did these uh, like black and white wood blocks um, of pop culture uh, characters, and uh, everything was going great. And he was doing really well. And he got, he had a couple notices, and then uh, Batman, uh, Warner Brothers went after him for Batman, and he lost his shop. Wow! And he lost his shop. And uh, I had Batman too recently. Um, I had somebody came after and um, composite Superman of all things. 
you know, composite Superman, half Superman, half mm-hmm. Batman. Yeah, I think so I've seen myself, that one. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, it's yeah, it's it's not up there. And um, <laughs> um, so like stuff, I said, okay, take down Superman, take down Batman, mm-hmm. take down Spy, you know, uh, Batgirl, every, you know, anything in that realm, take mm-hmm. down. Um, so it's, mm-hmm. I don't know. There's That's, there's no. Yeah. There's no hard and fast rules to this thing, you know. I was wondering if it would kind of depend on characters too. Of like, Batman's more popular; they come after you for that. But they're like, eh, man, thing, that's fine. And then I was also yeah. thinking too, like with Marvel and yep. DC, those are big enough companies that they're like, there's so much of our stuff out there; it's harder to find. Versus like Spawn, where it's like Todd McFarlane maybe probably doesn't have very many people doing Spawn stuff as much as Marvel does. I don't know if he was yeah. a little more Jones and for a lawsuit. Yeah, I don't, I don't know. There's, there's, I mean, there doesn't seem to be a rhyme or reason. It's, it's really strange, you know, both on, you know, character and company. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. So you just kind of cross your fingers and hope nobody goes after you. And if they do, um, you usually just take it down. Yeah. You know, I'm not going to sell it anymore. I mean, sure. like I said before, most, most of us are not out, you know, we're not millionaires. We're not making mm-hmm. a lot of money. Some people that I've talked to actually, they're, as artists, this is nothing coming from any company. They believe, well, we're helping perpetuate the license. We're helping perpetuate, you know, uh, uh, advertise the character. Um, yeah. I don't know if, if the companies feel that way. Um, <laughs> uh, but um, yeah. I think there is something to that. Um, you know, you're yeah. getting different interpretations. And a lot of people come to artist alley or buy stuff off etsy because they like your interpretation of that you know it's something they've never seen it's something unique it's something different Mm -hmm. um so uh, i'll I'll continue to do it as long as i can (laughs) just gotta look out for those hello kitty lawyers (laughs) yes exactly yes exactly (laughs) it was oh here's another one um did you guys are you guys familiar with the the casper the ghost yeah yes okay hot stuff the character little devil somebody okay. came after you know uh I, I don't whoever owned that said take hot stuff off i'm like okay you know that's that's fine hmm. and etsy doesn't ask you they just they take it down oh, okay. they, they take it down and here's another weird thing about etsy um and once again i love etsy it's, it's a great platform for people but so you're going to take down my hello kitty but here's a porno rendition of batgirl right. that is up there um, I don't know if you guys have surfed at Etsy, but um, don't let your kids surf Etsy. <laughs> um, I mean, I mean you know why I say that? Yeah. Because there's everything from, you know, little cute Hello Kitty stickers to, you know, you know what I'm saying. There's all oh, kinds yeah. of right. bizarre, you know, um, naked pornographic Disney princesses. And I'm like, I don't get it. You know, what are the rules? I just yeah, why, <laughs> why isn't Disney going after them instead of <laughs> yeah. you're yeah, still showing a my... cute Hello Kitty? Yeah, you know, the, yeah, my hot stuff button that I sold one in two years, you know, you're going after me, you know, for that, but I don't know. I don't, I don't know. I don't yeah. know. Interesting. Um, so now getting back to um, your animation with the serial commercials, I don't know, maybe you have some legal stuff, but would we know any of your serial commercials you, you oh, invented yeah, to Ken Sam? That. Or... <laughs> um, yeah, I could talk about that. So, um, when I, um, I, I got into that whole thing, I'm trying to think when the year was, it was, um, I had a bunch of like dead end jobs. Like I always was an artist. I always wanted to be an artist, but I didn't know how to be an artist. You know, I didn't know how to get my foot in the door. I didn't know what to do. So I'm going to say nineties, the early nineties, mid nineties, you had this animation boom, right? Mm -hmm. You know, you had like, uh, uh, the Lion King, and you had uh, Little Mermaid. I might begin the dates wrong, although I'm sorry, but yeah, there was yeah. a there was a. Is that right? You know. Yeah, they the, call that the Disney Renaissance. If I remember yes, right. Yes, and that was you know. Then you had a trickle effect, right? But then suddenly you know you had all these cable stations like Nickelodeon and Cartoon mm-hmm. Network were producing, you know, new shows. It was no longer reruns of of Yogi Bear, but now you had like Dexter's Laboratory and Powerpuff Girls and so there's a huge boom in that. And uh, I said, well, you know what? I, 
I want to draw for a living. Um, maybe I'll be an animator. So that was my that was my motivation. You know, that was my motivation was drawing to get paid. Nice. So um, I went to uh, Columbia College in Chicago, mm -hmm. and they had um, a film and video program. But what attracted me to that school was they had an animation department. So it was somewhere where I could get a degree, um, like a, a bachelor's BA, right? A bachelor's. Mm -hmm. yeah. And um, in film and video with a concentration in animation. And um, so I did that. Um, and then I, and then, you know, the bottom fell out of the animation boom <laughs> as I was getting out of school, which happened to a lot of people. Um, and, you know, people weren't, you know, you, they were making, you, you know, be an animator, make $200,000 a year, you know, all these crazy mm -hmm. salaries and all the trade magazines were pumping, you know, their own field and stuff like that. And, um, but I was very lucky. Um, I applied at this studio called uh, Calabash Animation in Chicago and they're still around, they're still around. And um, they mostly 90% of the work that we did there was uh, for General Mills, for, uh, Tricks and Lucky Charms commercials. Okay. Yeah. So um, now, even now, things have changed greatly. Um, if you see a lot of uh, serial commercials nowadays, um, it, it, it could be a mixture of live action and maybe a little bit of animation, mm -hmm. or they kind of get around um, doing hand drawn animation because it's it's so time consuming. It's a very expensive process. But I was really lucky to get in when we were doing these full blown 30 second commercials, which were like, oh man, like, to, like for example, like to do a 30 second commercial, it could take us like two or three months wow. from start to finish. And, you know, you'd have maybe half a dozen people on the beginning of it. And then toward the, toward the end, the mad rush, you might have 12 to 20 people. Um, because it was it was all hand drawn. It was frame by frame, mm. and that's what the the company wanted. These very elaborate, um, theatrical looking commercials. Um, so I it was a great experience for me. Um, I was really lucky. I got in right before, um, you know, traditional a lot of traditional animation went away. Um, so like my friend, I have some friends who still freelance there. And they do everything on, you know, Wacom tablets and, and stuff like that. Um, so I got to learn like an old style type of drawing. Um, mm. I made a lot of great friends there. Um, great people, you know, just friends that I had, um, you know, I've known them for over 20 years. And um, there was a real bonding there. I think um, there's something about animators. You know, you have to be kind of insane in a way to be an animator. <laughs> Um, because um, it's very labor intensive and you need a lot of solitude. You need a lot of solitude to get the work done and to concentrate. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's a really, I had a hard time uh, because you had to draw, you had to convey a message with your drawing, and then you had timing. You know, uh, how many drawings does it take for somebody to shake their head back and forth? How many drawings does it take for somebody to pick up a spoon and put the cereal in their mouth? So there's all these um, different things going on in your head, uh, different disciplines. Um, you know, huge respect for people who do that kind of work. Um, I learned a ton, especially coming out of college, out of um, Columbia College. Um, it was a great first step. It was a great first job. Um, a lot of great memories, learned a ton that I still use to this day. A lot of stuff I learned back then, I, I still use today. Nice. And then... oh, so, so, so Lucky Charms and Tricks, yes. So that's, that's what I did there. Very cool. We would do, we did a couple uh, Mr. Cleans. We did some high enough bees. Um, and then they had a Calabash. Another nice thing about Calabash uh, at the time that I was there is they had something called a shorts program. So when we weren't, completely immersed in doing the serial commercials or whatever commercial they, they came about, um, they allowed the, um, the staff people there to create animated shorts on the side to, and which was fantastic because it gave you something to look forward to. It kind of gave you a challenge, like maybe to learn something that 
we weren't learning in, in the commercials. Mm -hmm. um, and that was, that was a wonderful experience as well. Very cool. And then how about the Happy Meal toys? Do I have any of those back at my parents' <laughs> house in my uh, toy box? You might. You, um, so I did, um, so I worked in animation for about, oh my God. Um, when did I get out of school? Like 2000? I don't know. I worked in there like for maybe nine, almost 10 years in animation. But I live on the suburbs, the Chicago suburbs. So the commute was was brutal. Um, I had to drive to the train station, take the train to the Chicago, and then walk 20 minutes from the station to, mm. to work. So it was probably about an hour and a half one way. Um, and I did that for, you know, nine years. Mm -hmm. And um, <laughs> so um, but my buddy, Kevin, who I mentioned before, you know, he, he was back in Chicago. He was working on doing slot machine animation. He told me about this opportunity that was like two miles from my house. He said, hey, man, um, there's this place hiring people for uh, Happy Meals, and it's two miles from your house. And I'm like, oh, my God. I'm like, okay, I'll try it. You know, like, <laughs> mm -hmm. and there was no plans to be a toy designer. <laughs> it was just, it's a job close to my house. Yeah. Um, and so I, I applied, and um, I was fortunate enough to get, get the position. Um, and I worked there for about a year and a half, almost two years. Um, and then the art director who was there at the time, of the Happy Meals moved to another company called Index Promotions. And he brought me over with him because he had an animation background too. And like I said, there's something about animators, right? Mm -hmm. you, you click, you get each other. And we got along really well. And um, so he brought me over to Index and um, we did, uh, oh, I did uh, Burger King, uh, Wendy's, um, sports toys, you know, like uh, first hundred people in the stadium get the bobblehead, you know, mm -hmm. like mm -hmm. yeah. all that stuff. And that lasted until COVID, you know, wow. dun, dun, dun. Um, <laughs> you know, COVID just kind of changed everything. And um, mm -hmm. COVID came and um, uh, everything was fine for almost a year. And then one day I get a phone call and boom, thanks for the 12 years here. You lost your job. Wow. Um, wow. It was, it was, it was, it was just like that. <laughs> well, thanks for everything you've done for 12 years. Uh, we have cutbacks, you know, blah, blah, blah. And I was, I was, that was not good, Shoot. you know, like a lot of people, but it was not good for a lot of people, you know? Mm -hmm. So um, a lot of people suffered for many different reasons, be it sickness or, or jobs or whatever, you know, we all have our stories or we know of people who, you know, who got hurt by that. And, and, you know, nothing's really bounced back from there, but uh, that was oh, going on two years ago, going on two years ago, but uh, I still freelance for the place. They still, you know, we left on good terms um, good. and I've, that allowed me to go more into doing more shows and put myself into, into doing that kind of work. Um, so for now, that's what I'm doing. Um, and, you know, we're getting by okay um, and, we'll see what happens. You know, we take it year by year, you know, yeah. like mm -hmm. how's it, you know, how's it going? And, um, uh, my wife knows what I, I love what I'm doing. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so it's kind of, but we're doing okay. We're doing okay. Yeah. Good. So were you, you already were going to shows with your art or did that just start when you got laid off? Fortunately, I had already started doing that. So I okay. had already started building up like a momentum. Good. So, um, I was laid off maybe uh, two years ago and mm -hmm. I've been doing shows for I'm gonna say seven years I'm not sure if it was okay. six or seven so I was already doing that stuff I already had the Etsy shop so um I just put more time into that you know luckily I just I had uh, another outlet um so doing uh, doing I do shows I do commissions I got the shop um I just try to you know do whatever I can um it, it's a completely different lifestyle because um mm -hmm. Most artists, if you have any artist friends or know any artists, it's not a very stable lifestyle um, for most of us. You know, getting laid off or let go is common. And um, I was able to work 
you know, steady, you know, for about 20 years. And that's almost unheard of. Um, mm-hmm. yeah. And my time had come, you know, everybody else, every other person I knew who was an artist was let go or the company dissolved or what have you. And it was just my time. And um, now it's a different lifestyle. Now you have to, you know, you heard the term hustle, right? You got to hustle, <laughs> you know, so I got to hustle for work and, and stuff like that. But um, I'm not complaining. You know, I'm not complaining. No complaints. Very nice. Um, and then you're doing shows kind of all over the Midwest, right? Correct. Correct. Okay. So when I started doing shows, I was doing uh, C2E2. Um, mm-hmm. Have you guys been to C2E2? Yeah, I think that was yeah. actually my first uh, Comic Con I've ever been to. And that's amazing. It's 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 a, it's a great show. Um, it's I I've been going there since day one, since they started out in Chicago, and it started out really small, but it was well organized. It was family, very important, family friendly. It was mm-hmm. family friendly, meaning, um, you know groups of girls, groups of, you know, families, strollers. Um, Mm -hmm. It was wonderful. It was very welcoming to more than just the, um, and I don't know if you guys remember like the old comic (laughs) conventions, it was just, you know what I'm talking about. Right. Yes. Um, Different demographics, maybe. (laughs) Yes. I, 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 you know, I hate, I, you know, I no, hate no, we, we've that. been to a lot of comic cons, comic stores. We know that sometimes they're not always, the most accessible to right. uh, newcomers. <laughs> we always <laughs> joke about people can always send us action figures if they want to, but we're going to give them their PO box because we don't want these psychos knowing where we live. <laughs> that's, that's, yeah, I, how do I put your foot around that? Um, so a good example of that is um, <laughs> my wife, um, who my wife and I met at uh, College of DuPage, um, which is out here in, I think it's out in Wheaton. And um, we were both taking advertising and illustration classes there. <clears throat> and as we were dating and stuff like that, um, I've always been a comic fan, you know, even though I got into animation and stuff, I just, I always loved comics. And so um, I would bring her to comic shops and she, you know, she found something that she liked. She liked, um, oh my God, Kabuki, David Mack. I think the artist is David Mack Kabuki, a very painterly illustration style. Okay. And uh, she just got hooked on this. But at some point, she told me, I'm not going to inside the store with you because I can't stand the people. <laughs> you know, I mean, it's, it's harsh. It's, and, and same thing with the conventions. Is she's, mm-hmm. She would go to a couple of conventions and she really enjoyed the um, what was there, like the variety of what was for sale and stuff. But she got tired of being knocked into, bumped into you know, you know, rudely, you know, moved over or someone looking at what she was looking at. Um, you know, I just, you guys know what I'm saying and I'm not, oh, yeah. yeah, for sure. So, so, you know, multiply that by, a, you know, a million people who mm-hmm. have tried, you know, tried to go into comic shops or try to go in conventions and um, it's, but it's changed luckily, mm-hmm. you know, to a great degree. Um, now um, there's a lot of, and I'm sorry if I sounded if I sound dated when I say this. And I and I tell this to my kids. My I have I have twins. I have two children, and they're 15. In the past couple of shows, they've been helping me. Now they're they're an age where they they come and they help dad at the shows, and they're probably tired of hearing this. But I say to my I say I tell them I go you know what I never thought I'd see the day where girls would go to comic conventions, where I see <laughs> where I see and where I see packs of girls, packs mm-hmm. of teenagers or families or wives or strollers. And so it's changed so much and I'm so happy. Yeah. I'm so happy to see that, that it's overcome this um, stereo kind of type um, of person. Um, but a lot of people were turned off by that. I guess that's what I'm trying to say. A lot of, and my wife was mm-hmm. one of them. She's like, I'm not going to that comic shop, you yeah. know? And she's like, get me my Kabuki comic. There's five dollars, but not stepping in the store. <laughs> yeah, understandable. Well, um, my wife definitely appreciates it. She loves your. Uh, I think I got her your Sabrina, Sabrina the Teenage Witch, and Scarlet Witch pins. So oh, we've got thank those you. displayed. So thank you so much. Pretty cool. Yeah. Thank you. Um, I think just a few more questions wrapping up to get you out of here. Don't want to take up too much of your time. Um, 
one thing I was wondering is out of all of your um, posters that people can see on Etsy, do you personally have like one or two favorites that you love? Um, yeah, that's a question I get all the time. It shows mm -hmm. like, what's your favorite? And mm -hmm. uh, I think I'm, I'm closing in on 200 right now. I'm closing in on 200 different characters. <laughs> Um, I, you know, keep doing them. I would say I don't have anything Jack Kirby related, honestly, yeah. anything Kirby related. Um, oh, I didn't even get to the Kirby. Oh, okay. Well, you know, I could talk for another three hours. Um, <laughs> um, you know, Jack, no, Jack Kirby, um, his, anything that he touched to me was gold, you know, so mm -hmm. um, devil, Di I loved his devil dinosaur, you know, I, so I did a devil dinosaur print. Um, when you're, uh, I'm gonna, once again, we're kind of go, we're going to go back to that mindset. I'm going to give you an example. You know, when Devil Dinosaur came out, um, I was probably eight or nine years old and it blew my mind away, you know, because at the time I was, uh, a Fantastic Four fan. I love the thing. The thing was mm -hmm. my favorite character. So Fantastic Four and Marvel two and one Marvel two and one was a monthly magazine and it featured the thing and the guest star of the month right <laughs> so um i remember i was with my uncle uh we stopped at a drugstore and uh he's he's like okay go look at the comics i gotta go pick up some things and uh i picked up my marvel two and one and then there was like this freakish comic named devil dinosaur and i'm like dinosaurs aliens giant ants you know, so that was the first time, that was the first time I ever put down a comic based on a character and bought a comic based on a creator. And mm -hmm. I was like eight years old and it was, it was Kirby, you know, he just, he, bam, you know, something mm -hmm. latched on to um, that eight, nine-year-old and flash forward to today, it, thank God Kirby's getting all the recognition he mm -hmm you know he deserves but mm -hmm. i remember as a teenager in my early 20s i worked at a comic shop by the way for a little bit too god i could do another episode um i worked at a comic <laughs> Say, shop we for... might need to we might need to bring you back <laughs> i worked at a comic shop for a couple of years i worked in comic distribution for a couple of years um but i would you know you always hear people say oh jack kirby doesn't know how to write oh jack kirby can't do dialogue oh look you know devil dinosaur oh he doesn't know how to draw the... i'm like you know what when you're eight and nine it's it's the best stuff on the world mm -hmm. you know it's the best thing on the planet there, you know it's not an angst ridden angry you mm -hmm. know solemn character you know it's it's, yeah. a, it's a dinosaur fighting aliens right. right and that's what kirby was all about he was about fun fun explosive ideas the commandy that's another of my favorites mm -hmm. commandy is um jack kirby doom planet of the apes you know mm -hmm. uh, it's not a superhero book it's an adventure book mm -hmm. you know it's about this little boy who's alone in a world full of animals who have taken over the, you know, taken over the planet. And uh, it's very touching, you know, as a, as a kid, you liked it for, here's this boy fighting these wolf men or these gorilla men. <laughs> but as an adult, you go back and you read some of those stories. And uh, there was a lot of good moments in those, like very touching moments, very human mm -hmm. moments. Yeah. Um, so Kirby was working on many different levels. Um, he would be attractive to a child, but he also had very adult themes in his work. Mm -hmm. So back to your question, what are your favorites? Anything Kirby related. Okay. <laughs> I'm sorry. Well, I go off on a tangent. I'm sorry. No, that's fine. <laughs> and now is your man cave wallpapered in all of your posters and art? <laughs> My man cave looks exactly like your man caves. Okay. Um, looking at your, um, but um, I've got, uh, I got a really nice space in the, um, I'm in the basement and um, it's lined with bookshelves, just like you guys have, just like nice. you guys have. But instead of statues and action figures, I've got masterworks, omnibuses, mm -hmm. um, you know, uh, epic collections, uh, stuff like that. And then um, let's see, I got some Jack Kirby. Um, I got a really nice printer. So um, I found some like double page spreads of his that I liked oh, and I just nice. printed them out and made my own posters. And, um, yeah, it's it look, like your house. It looks like a comic book store, you know, <laughs> or, cool. or a toy shop. Yeah, it's, um, 
and my wife has been very supportive of all this. Um, I try to keep everything within my, you know, man cave. Mm-hmm. But um, recently, she actually bought a display case and mm-hmm. um, put it in the front room, and she was mad at me because she's like, "Why didn't you ever? Why don't you ever display that Hellboy statue I got you? You know, like, <laughs> like before we had kids, like twenty years ago, she bought me. It was probably like the first." Bowen Hellboy statue mm-hmm. and uh she also bought me a, a thing uh statue and um so we finally have those displayed in the display cases mm-hmm. um Very but cool. they look really nice they're, they're art- yeah. it's artwork yeah it's artwork yeah no it's sculpture it's artwork sure. so that's yeah. the good part about Halloween is I've got all of my uh creepy looking action figures out throughout the living room Ooh. and kitchen oh that makes me awesome. think I'd want to see more monsters Daryl if you mm. could just keep the monsters coming Oh, I love I love the monsters. I did I did Man Thing a couple mm-hmm. years ago. What about like a um, Frankenstein? Yeah, I did. Um, it's funny because I um, I don't like to be trendy, and I'm doing little quotes <laughs> in my fingers. I yeah. don't like to be trendy, but I had to do Werewolf by Night. Mm-hmm. Yeah, recently I saw that one. That's cool because that was on my to do list anyway, right? Okay. Mm-hmm. And um, I and you know everybody's got their own opinion, right? But Oh my god, I love that show. Yeah, that was <laughs> good. Oh my god, it was uh, my buddy Kevin. Uh, he texts me and he's like, "Put down whatever you're doing right now <laughs> and watch Werewolf by Night." Oh, and yeah. I literally did that. I literally <laughs> did that. And uh, normally, I watch the shows with my kids. Um, That's one of our bonding processes. And um, I I turned it on. And I had goosebumps on my arm, like for an hour straight. And I was like, that felt like reading a 1970s comic. That was mm-hmm. a Bronze Age comic on the screen, you know? And my kids were at a football game or, or doing something. They, um, it's nice because they, they hang out together, which is really cool. And um, they came home and I said, Werewolf by Night was on i just watched it and they like wow what you watch it with they're mad at me and i'm like we want to watch it again and i never do that with anything i never watch something a, a second time so a half hour later i watched it again and i got something out of it the second time and mm-hmm. it was so exciting it was so exciting and it so werewolf by night um i did that because i was so jazzed about that but mm-hmm. i love to do a um uh, you know, Frankenstein monster. I love to do a Dracula. Uh, probably more geared toward like the the Marvel versions, though, to right. kind of yeah. go along with what you're saying. I, I, I love the Marvel, and I've been, and that kind of got me. Um, I got you know the Man Thing on the bus. I've been reading that. Mm-hmm. I've been reading the uh, Morbius um, mm-hmm. epic collections. Um, are you guys familiar with an artist? His name is Michael Plug or Mike Plug. He did a lot of. Mm. Uh, Marvel horror comics. He did Werewolf okay. by Night, Man Thing. Okay, oh, I'd, I'd probably God. recognize it if I saw it because if you saw his I, artwork, I, Mike, I, I grew Mike up Plew. loving the monsters. Still do. So those are my. He, he my did favorites. a lot of those. <laughs> he was like the go-to guy for those early monster comics. Yeah. Like his interpretation was the interpretation. I'm redis- and I'm rediscovering those things because of that Werewolf by Night special. Mm-hmm. You know, I'm and bam, within one hour, they introduced us to a whole new universe. Mm-hmm. You know mm-hmm. that. Wow. So yeah, I will be doing more horror. So All right. to answer your question, yeah, yeah, definitely. Okay, so Look forward to it. I guess going Thank back you. to your, uh, you don't do trendy. That was going to be another one of my questions because Jordan and I all sometimes we like to stock up on action figures that are going to be coming to the MCU. Like I've got She-Hulk back here. That one didn't pan out, but I've got Ironheart back here. I'm hopeful that that increases the value of the action figure. But would you? I guess does that play into your thought process of like, oh? Blade is going to be coming to the MCU. I should probably have that in the works so that when he comes out and people are looking for Blade posters, I've got it ready to go. That's a really good question. Um, I would say only recently have I begun to start doing that. Hmm. And that's only because this is what I do for a living now. Mm -hmm. So my mind has shifted from, say, doing, oh, I'm going to do an OMAC, which nobody knows who OMAC is. I don't know sure. if you guys know who You know who OMAC is? It's a, yeah, I mean, I, I don't know if I've read anything, but I've it, seen it's like, an the action figures and stuff. Yeah. So, you know, something that maybe one 
or two people at the convention would even know who it was to like mm-hmm. maybe for example like i did a moon night recently right because we watched you know uh, my daughter and i watched the moon night series so i'm like okay that's cool mm-hmm. um i really I, I really have to like it though you know like i have to have some kind of um feeling toward it because when somebody comes to my table and i and my, and my kids are learning this because this is the first work experience really they've never mm-hmm. they're 15 they've never had jobs and i love having them at the table because it's teaching them how to interact with people mm-hmm. and part of the whole you know convention experience being on the other side of it is interacting with people either who buy your work or sometimes they don't buy your work and that's mm-hmm. fine but I, I have to be able to talk about everything that I've drawn with somebody in mm-hmm. a positive in a positive manner. And my 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 daughter is actually an artist. She's she's freaking amazing. <laughs> but she is seeing things now at shows, and I call it the baby Yoda syndrome. Mm-hmm. Um so oh Star Wars has got this new baby Yoda character. So fifty people at the next show are gonna have baby Yoda. Right. Or mm-hmm. um, or Mandalorian. Right. You yeah. know, so now you got 50 Mandalorians. Um, so I try to stay away from that and kind of stay within my own realm. Sure. But like do the moon night. Right. Do the mm-hmm. werewolf by night. Um, I, I, I already did a She-Hulk. A lot of the characters that are coming out, I've already done already. Sure. Like um, Scarlet Witch was a very popular one, but I did Scarlet yeah. Witch like five or six years ago. Mm-hmm. Um, so um, I kind of pick and choose to answer that question. Um, a lot of artists, and I don't blame them. I don't blame them at all. I'm not pointing fingers, but a lot of it's uh, trend related. Like, yeah. you know, um, uh, Joe, Jack Skellington is a hot seller. I got to have my Jack Skellington mm-hmm. or, uh, you know, you, you name yeah. the character, whatever, you know, sure. whoever's trendy. Yeah. Um, you know. So I, I, tr- I try to stay with stuff that I know or like, um, mm-hmm. but like I will be doing more horror because I'm excited about it in a very positive way. Yeah, very yeah. exciting, very exciting. Love the sound of that. <laughs> Thank Look you. forward to them. <laughs> Thanks. Yeah. Thank you. Um, I mean, I think that wraps it up for us. We've gone about an hour, so I don't want to take oh up your whole night. Let you get no, back I, to your I enjoyed family. It. And, Thank you. Um, I really enjoyed it. If you ever want me back, I could, I could go on. And <laughs> <laughs> Definitely. So. Um, yeah. So yeah, I think just a rem- reminder to all you listeners out there, if you want to check out any of the stuff we've talked about, if you're watching on YouTube, I've been flashing some of the posters up um, as we've talked. Um, but if you want to see everything that's available for purchase, you can go to the link in the description. I'll have his Etsy shop down there. Check out the posters, the buttons. Um, it just seems like endless cool things that I would spend all of my money to fill my walls. Um <laughs> But if you're subscribed on YouTube, then you're entered to win um, one of those posters for free. So you can get your collection started a little bit cheaper than uh, the rest. But if you've got anything that you think Daryl should be working on, also leave a comment down below. Yeah. Maybe he'll see those and um, add it to his uh, to-do list. So um, (laughs) other than your Etsy shop, Daryl, was there anything else that you wanted to uh, plug or let us know about? Um, no, I'm on Etsy. I'm on Instagram. Uh, I think it's Daryl Young Design 69. I think, uh, Instagram, Facebook, and that's about all I can handle. I'm sorry. I'm not on Twitter. <laughs> Understandable. <laughs> it, uh, it took actual, it took help for me to actually be on Instagram for, for people mm-hmm. like, this is how you post a post on Instagram. Right. I'm like, okay, I'm sorry. I can't learn anymore. You know, <laughs> so Instagram, mm-hmm. Etsy, and then I do shows in the Midwest. Um, mm-hmm. And I'm starting to expand. I used to do just a couple shows. Now that I'm doing this full time, um, like, where did I, uh, Dakota, where did I meet you? Was that Iowa? Were we in Iowa? Uh, well, we that? first, Jordan and I got our first posters in Cedar Rapids, Iowa, but then I saw right. you recently um, in Madison. That's where oh, I'm Wisconsin. at. Wisconsin. That's right. Yeah. That's right. So I'm starting to venture off the in the Midwest and next year I'm hoping to maybe go to Ohio, maybe Kentucky, mm-hmm. kind of like a slow process. It's a slow process, but I will tell you, I really, I, I'm more of a, I'm more of a homebody. I'm mm-hmm. not somebody who likes to go on vacations and go and go traveling, but I tell my wife, I go, I'm really having a good time at these shows. Um, yeah. I, I really enjoy them. I, I meet people I never would have met. Um, I have awesome discussions with people. Uh, people um and 
I get, I just, I get the nicest stories. I get the nicest stories based on my artwork um, that I have never gotten in my life because as a commercial artist, nobody knows who you are for the most part. You know, you're just a wrist in the background yeah. and there's nothing wrong with that, but I've got some really touching personal stories uh, based on my artwork uh, that, uh, uh, you know, help you give, you know, help, they give you purpose. You know, they give you mm -hmm. they give you a purpose. They make you feel good about what you're doing. So, I'll be doing more shows, more of them uh, in 2023. So look out for me. Um, and um, I'm pretty quiet, but as you guys know, once you get me started, I won't mm -hmm. shut up. So come by, say hi, and then I'm kind of that breaks the ice. I really like talking to people at shows. Mm -hmm. I really do. Yeah. Very cool. Well, you'll be able to find Daryl. He's got the posters all hung up, kind of a taller display. Um, and then the books in front that you can just flip through forever. And that's kind of how Jordan and I found our posters. So yeah, uh, go check out any of your local Midwest um, comic shows and follow on Instagram and Facebook. And he's usually posting kind of what shows are coming up that he'll be at. So um, yeah, like, share, subscribe, enter to win a poster. And until next time, stay strong. Mm -hmm.